Hey, Mr. Z here. I'm in the audio room and control room A here in the Marturi building. We're going to talk about the Wheatstone Series 4 audio board today. I got three cameras on this. You got me right here. I got a camera up top. There it is showing the audio board itself. And I got a camera behind me that's going to show the touch screen so I can show everything in one clip. I'm going to edit this together so you can see everything nicely. But I want to go over the audio board basics today. Uh, it's a lot of stuff that I end up showing people over and over and over again how to use it. So I figure I make this video so everyone can watch it over and over and over again to your heart's content and learn about the audio board. So there are two main components here. We have the mixing board itself. We also have the touch screen up here that controls a lot of the back end stuff of the audio board. So we're actually going to start with the touch screen because if you sit down and you don't know who is using the board last, you want to start from the basic settings for whatever studio you're shooting in. So on this touch screen, on the top here, you have different tabs. All the way to the right is the events tab. And when I load this, I have some presets that I've made in the past. You can see there's a Studio A, Studio B, Forum, uh, stu Studio B with 16 mics. We did a debate show in the forum, full story. So I, I name them based on what they are. I'm shooting Studio A today, so I want to press Studio A. And once it's highlighted, I'm going to hit Arm and Take. And nothing happened there because it was pretty much already set there. But I'm just going to show that again. Say I was in the middle of something else and I did that arm and I take it. Everything's going to snap into the preset that I had made for Studio A in the past. So now that we're there, let's go ahead and go to the main tab here where you're going to see everything. And you'll see there are a couple audio things moving here. For one thing, I actually have these Studio A wireless here with me. I'm not going to turn this up because I don't want to get feedback in here, but I brought it in so you can see the audio levels itself. On the right end over here, we actually have uh, the CD players playing over here and we have tone, just regular tone that would be coming over uh, for doing tests and things like that. So let's start with the CD player just as an example. So I just have some music playing on a loop over there. In order to turn and listen to anything. So every pot is exactly the same. It looks very intimidating. You see 24 physical sliders. This board can actually do up to 48 individual audio channels at once. Every single channel does exactly the same thing. It just based on what's assigned to it is what it's going to do. So over here on my last channel, my 24th channel here, currently the CD is there. And I know that because if I look in this little digital screen here, it says CD-A. So that says CD player control room A basically is what it's saying. Right now, this is off and it is the volume is all the way down. To turn any channel on, if I use a slider, nothing is happening. It's going to show me what volume level I'm at on my screen here, but I don't hear anything. In order to hear it, I need to hit the on button. If the red light is on, that means my audio is hot. And now I can bring it up. And then if I just hit the on button again, it's going to shut it off. So I can fade it out. Or I can take it off just by pushing the button. With music, usually I want to fade in and out. But I can also, you know, if someone's mic is on, I need to shut them off real quick. I just hit the button. When it comes to mics, which we'll talk about in a minute, I don't want to be fading mics on and off. I want to turn mics on and off because once I have the level set for a person, I don't want to keep adjusting with that level during the show. I want to keep it there. So speaking of levels, this is my volume level on the slider. Up here is my gain level on the touch screen. And you can see here my CD is actually going a little bit above where I want it to be. On this bottom section here are all my 24 inputs. And in the middle of that, this gray line that's going through here is my 0 dB line. And I really want what I call my solid peak to be just touching that line. So each track has two peaks. There's a uh, solid peak and then there's a peak above that for whatever reason. I don't know why they put it there. I'm not worried about it. I'm worried about this solid peak. Right now it's a little too high. So I'm going to use this screen to drag this slider down a little bit. Now this is a little bit sensitive of the screen. Sometimes it works right, sometimes it jumps. But I can just use my finger or my thumb here to slide this up and down until I get the solid peak about on that zero line there. 
It doesn't need to be constantly there, but I want it to be there. That's where I want to start at. Now I can use the slider here to adjust my volume up or down during the show. So if I'm fading in music underneath someone talking, you know, we're, we're doing the show open, I might start on hot and then fade it out while they're talking and then fade it out and under. And as the show comes to an end, I'm fading up the music. Anchors are still talking. And as they finish speaking, I bring it all the way up to full. So that's how I'd use the music track. And this is just tone right here. Nothing crazy about that one. In fact, right there it says tone on the board. There's also a switcher audio input. So um, we can create transitions on the raw switcher in the other room that have audio embedded in with them. So Sports Buzz, our graduate sports show, they have created a custom transition that has a little sound to it. In order for that to happen, this has to be on and open, up and open, in order for it to uh, be heard. So if they want to use that, this needs to be on and working. Otherwise, you're not going to hear that. Now let's go down to this end of the board where the microphones are. So I actually have uh, eight inputs here. The first six are mic inputs from the studio. So you might have these four are actually plugs on the desk. These two are other plugs within the studio. These two are the wireless mics. I know they're wireless because on the top here again it says wireless WLS 1A. So wireless 1A, wireless 2A. And here I have the A1 or 1A microphone in my hands right here. And we're going to do this as a little demo. So when you're doing your sound checks before a show, you know, you'd have this on your talent. So there's two sides to the microphone here. One has a little fabric side, one is a solid back. The fabric side should be facing away from the talent. So of course I'd run this down the shirt and everything, but I want it to be about here. Good rule of thumb is to use your thumb and your pinky finger as the distance from your chin down to where the microphone should be about. So maybe it's a little too high. That's as low as I can get on this shirt. So this is where I want it to be. Now I'm gonna do my sound test with my talent. Yes, I do with the count one, two, three, four, five. That's really just to make sure I can hear it. Once I want to get a level, I want them to start reading the script as they're going to say it for the show. And then on my screen here, I can see, let's, I'm going to mess it up so it's a little too high. See now, I'm looking at that. That is too high. I can see that. It's peaking all the way at the top, so I need to start bringing this down. And I can do this. Look, I'm doing this without even hearing their actual audio. I'm doing this straight on levels itself. I'm going to bring it down and right about, oh, still too hot. As I'm talking, three, two, one, one, two, three, check one, two, and now I'm at about the exact level. And I'm still gonna adjust this a little bit during sound check while they're reading their scripts, but this is basically where I need to be, and I want all my mics to be peaking at the same spot. Again, along that zero dB line right on the touch screen here. And now to make it live, okay, I'm gonna turn my speaker down a little bit here so I don't feedback too crazy. Again, I turn it on and up and it's going to feed back just a little bit here. It doesn't sound perfectly great, but now it's on. And again, I would, to kill the mic, I would just hit the on and off button. Once my level is set for a microphone, I don't want to keep sliding this up and down. The only reason why I would slide this up and down during a show or during a recording is if they got a little quiet, I might push it up a little bit. If they got a little bit too loud because they are laughing or something, I can pull it down a little bit. I don't want to be touching the touch screen during the show because this is my overall sensitivity or my gain. And with the touchscreen itself sometimes, if you're not really careful, I've had it jump a couple dB at a time. So you might go, oh, I'm adjusting a little bit. All of a sudden, you're, you got feedback or you got crackling, I should say. So be very careful with that. Now, those are the basic things. Turn it on, bring the slider up. This is your volume for over the show. This is to make sure it's on. Another common thing that I see happening a lot is people are adjusting the volume down because they think it's too loud because it, they hear it too loud. Trust your meters, not your ears. Your ears are to verify that you don't have any crackling. Your eyes and your meters are to verify that it is at the right audio level. Now, what do I mean by that? First of all, inside the audio room, inside the main control room, you have a speaker knob that controls the loudness of these speakers. So right here, there is a knob labeled CR for control room. And as I turn this up and down, you see there's a little scale right here on this screen as well. It's gonna show you how loud that is. So if I turn the CD on here. So 
So I can make this very loud or very quiet within here. That does not determine how loud it's being recorded, that's just how loud my speakers are. And these speakers can get pretty loud, and I was only halfway up that I pushed this. These speakers can get, you know, if you want to build a home theater, these are the speakers to use for it. So when I say you want to trust your meter, so I'm going to actually shut this all the way off now, so there's no speakers in here. I'm just going to leave the mic open, the music open, I'll leave the mic open so it gets my, my talking and all that. When I look at the screen here, this number right here, and this is my main output. So on the right here, you have your main levels. Again, I want to be touching that zero mark. This black slider to the right here is my main output, my master volume. If I turn this all the way down, my master volume is gone. I need to have this up here. And there's, look, there's even a solid white line to show you where it should be. That's negative 12 dB. That's where I want to keep it. I don't really want to be going past that because I'm going to start getting too loud and peaking. So I want to keep my master volume about here. And I know I'm at a good level because I'm just touching this zero line on the touch screen there. And this number right here is very important, the LKFS number. This is an FCC regulation. This is the loudness meter that's keeping me within federal regulations to make sure I'm not too loud. I won't bore you with the details about why it's there, but it exists and we need to adhere to it. Negative 24 is as loud as I should be going on this meter. Now, first of all, if you don't see that on the screen when you get here, down here on the right side of my console, there is a button that says LKFS. If it's off, you don't see it on the screen. By pushing it there, it's going to replace the group volume levels with the LKFS. We're not really using the groups. I'm not going to touch on the groups in this video because that's a whole other level of stuff that I don't need worry, we don't want to worry about right now. The LKFS is more important. So first of all, if you come in, this is continually running, this number. So if it's you've been playing a CD overnight, it's going to be whatever that CD was, or if it's getting any silence, it's about that. So I can always hit the reset button and start it from zero. And now, so I might do that every time I start a new show, hit the reset button, and now it's leveling off, and you can see it's getting there. And if I push the CD a little too loud there, you see I've gotten too loud. It's above negative 24, so I'm going to bring that back down. Again, it's going to take a moment to level off, or I can hit that reset button so it recalibrates itself. But negative 24 is as loud as I want to get. It's okay to be negative 26, negative 28. I probably want to be louder than negative 30 because I'm going to get too quiet at that point. But you know, negative 22 to negative 24 is a good range to be in. Your music's probably going to be the loudest thing, and that's okay. A couple other things to look at for locations on the board anyways. Right here in the middle, I have it labeled servers one through four. These are the volumes from servers one through three right here. Server four we record to, so we're not really using that volume for the server, but these are our server levels for those. So when we're doing video playback from the airspeed, this is where we're gonna turn those volumes up. When I'm an audio technician and they're about to play a video package, I wanna make sure the audio for that video package is already open. I don't wanna wait for the cue from the director to turn it on. I should be anticipating that as an audio engineer. I know the script, I know it's coming. So I'm gonna have that open and ready to go beforehand. I might fade out at the end of the video package if, if that's called for in the script. But generally speaking, video packages, they're gonna play the package and then it's gonna end. And I don't need to worry about turning it on and off. The only thing I'm gonna worry about turning on and off is really the mics for the talent. Because as the talent goes into the video package, then I'm gonna to wanna to kill the mics for the talent. And then when they come back, open those mics back up. I don't, again, I don't want to be fading the talent up and down because now I have to make sure I hit the same spot every time. Once their audio levels are set for the talent, I just want to open the mic up when the talent needs to speak. When they go to the video package, I kill the talent's mic. Talent shouldn't have to worry about that at all. That's the audio engineer's job. Again, when they're counting down to mics being open, I want to anticipate the director's call. So before they get to one, my mic should already be open. So that way when they say their first words, the mic is already going. I don't wanna be hitting, waiting for that cue talent and I'm hitting the mic at the same time because I might be a moment late, the talent might be a moment early, and now we miss the first part of the first word that they say. Now the next thing I wanna talk about are these blue knobs at the top here. These are called my aux one and my aux two. I can do lots of things with auxes. What I have them programmed for is fall back into the studios. So at the far right here, I have a label, Studio A, Studio B. Very simply, aux one goes into Studio A, 
aux 2 goes into Studio B. Pretty simple to remember that way. And what I mean by fallback is if I need to play music in a studio for whatever reason, or I need to play audio back into the studio, I can, on whatever channel it is, so let's say it's the music channel though from the CD player, I can turn up the aux dial here, and now music is playing in Studio A. Or I turn that back down, now music is playing in Studio B, and I can control the volume of it from here. That way, if you're recording a performance, or they need to sing to a song, or whatever it is, I can get music or audio of any kind back into there. Now, I'm not going to want to do that with the microphones. I don't want to fall back a microphone back in the studio, because then we'll get feedback, and that would not be good. Now, the last thing I want to cover in this video is the PFL button, or the pre-fade level. This is a wonderful uh, button. It's a wonderful tool on the audio board for doing sound checks, especially while you're in the middle of a show. Yes, on campus we you know, we do a lot of you know to tape shows. We're not doing anything live, but it's a good real world experience thing that you should get to know and understand. So what the PFL does is if I want to do a sound check on one particular source while other things are happening, I can listen to just that source without stopping the production of the show. So if they're over there in the control room and they're listening to everyone talk, but I want to just focus on one microphone, I can hit the PFL on that microphone. It doesn't affect what everyone else in the main control room hears, it only affects what these speakers play. So to do that, on any track and here, I'm gonna open up the music here a little bit so you can hear in the background. And when I hit the PFL button on the microphone here, it's gonna mute that audio track. It'll mute all the tracks. And the only thing I'm gonna hear now is this microphone right here. And it has its own volume control. So there's a PFL control right here. Don't want to turn that too high or up, so I'm gonna feed back again. But there's my PFL, Q slash PFL level. So again, if I want to, you know, in, in the real world, what would be happening, you have a guest coming on the next segment, they just got their microphone on. Okay, let's do a quick check of that microphone. Yep, I got that mic, good, it's working. But we're still live on the air. I haven't stopped anything. Everything else is still going on. I hit the PFL, take that off. Now I have everything else playing again. It's a very simple way of doing that. So that's a great tool. Um, again, remember, the most basic thing is load your event at the beginning when you start and be respectful of the next person that's coming in. Go ahead, hit events, Studio A, arm, take it. That resets the board back to the save settings. Now when the next person comes in, have the main setting up, it's back to the level that it was at the beginning and the next person coming in for whatever show it is can now adjust the settings accordingly to their show. I hope you found this tutorial helpful about the audio board in the control room. I'm gonna have some more tutorials coming out soon. I'm gonna have another one about some more advanced features of this same board coming out as well. Talk about some more of the advanced features in it, groups, how to dial in different sources onto the board and stuff like that. So check out the links on my YouTube channel. That'll be coming out pretty soon. Have a great one.